let's see what some of our people uh, internationally have said. Um, I heard Neil earlier uh, talking about, uh, or his response rather, to my question about saving the world. I misstated my original question when I mentioned a desire to save the world. I want to help, and I now understand there's a difference whether one is based in fear or love or thoughts, words, and actions. So can Neil clarify, is it also misplaced energy? And is it a misplaced intention to try to help the world since everything has already happened anyway? And everyone is pursuing their own original intention for themselves, whether it be suffering, starving, or whatever. She, she says, it feels like I'm getting mixed messages as the books themselves state that they provide a way to help the world. I'd also like to know about collaborating with others in intentional efforts. When I asked that, I was encouraged to study, uh, when I asked that, I was encouraged to find study groups, which I guess is again all 100% about inner work and changing personal beliefs. Can Neil describe humanity's team or other group efforts to work together? Let's take a look at some of those questions real fast if we can. Those are very good questions. Uh, since everything has already happened anyway, and everything that ever was, is now, and ever will be, is now, what is the point of pursuing uh, anything other than inner intentions? And why bother trying to help the world? Uh, look, Conversations with God makes the following statement. There's only one reason to do anything. This was in book one. There's only one reason, really, to do anything. And this is something that I had not considered until I had my conversation with God. The only reason to do anything, wear the shirt you're wearing, comb your hair the way you comb your hair, eat the food you eat, speak the language using the vocabulary that you use, that is, what kind of words do you use? Do you use foul language or soft, sweet language? The tone of voice, the car you drive, the place you live, the, work, the, the occupation that you selected for your life's work, or helping the world. There's only one reason to do anything, from the small things to the big things, and that is every act is an act of self-definition. I never thought of life that way, but I want to repeat it because I just never thought of life that way. Every act is an act of self-definition. That is, everything we think and do and say defines ourselves and is a way of creating ourselves so that we might experience ourselves in a particular way, so that we might know ourselves in our own experience. That would be the only reason to help the world. Not because the world needs help in the largest sense. Of course, again, looking at it locally as a local phenomena of individualized physical life, of course the world needs help. But looking at it uh, from a cosmological point of view, the world doesn't need help in the sense that it was set up the way it's set up to provide us with an opportunity to do what it is we choose to do and be what it is we choose to be in relationship to that. Let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say. A doctor, let's just use a doctor. I like to tell the story, and I'll tell it quickly, of the doctor who was so excited he got out of medical school after studying, you know, you have to study a long time to be a doctor, and he had to study like 10, 12, 14 years, then three years of internship. Finally, it was the day that he opened his practice. And on the first day of opening his practice, his very first day of his own private practice as a medical doctor, a spaceship lands in the backyard, and out of the spaceship, a little man steps out and he says congratulations with one wave of my magic wand I'm going to bring you the gift of the cosmos we super beings have found a way and we're now going to share it with you with one wave of my wand I'm going to eliminate illness sickness and disease forever from the face of the earth and of course the doctor is aghast no and the Martian says perhaps you didn't hear me what I said was I'm going to eliminate illness, sickness, and disease from the face of the earth forever. And the doctor, again, no! I thought you were a doctor, the Martian says. Don't you want to eliminate illness and disease? Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? The doctor said, yes, but I want to do it myself. You understand? 
he needed the problem to be in place in order to express himself as who he is. If you eliminate the problem, there's nothing for us to do, which, by the way, happens to be God's predicament. See, God said to me in conversations with God, book one, you may have forgotten the passage, if there were no more problems, what am I doing here? So here's what you need to understand. The master understands that the so-called problems have been put in place, or more broadly, the condition of the world, the process of life is what it is by our own devising, by our own creation. We have created it that way as if we didn't know. We are collaboratively creating the conditions of the world. But what we don't understand is so that we can step in and solve it. Otherwise, what would there be to do? How could we experience ourselves as compassion if there was nothing to be compassionate about? How could we experience ourselves as patience if there was nothing that tried our patience? How could we experience ourselves as healers, as loving, caring people if there was no condition that called upon us to demonstrate those values? Therefore, bless, bless, bless your enemies or that which opposes you and be a light unto the darkness, yet curse it not. And that's why every great master has taught those truths. If you enjoy what you've just seen, consider making a donation so that you could have even greater access to more downloadable media and other content as well. Or visit our store and check out our calendar as well. <laughs>